Hello, everybody. This is Brother Leslie Wilds, King James Bible Baptist Church, 1402 East Fulton, Garden City, Kansas. Amen. It is April Fool's Day. Yeah, they call it that. April 1st, the year of our Lord, 2020. Don't be a fool. Don't listen to the devil. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. No fooling. No fooling indeed. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Well, hello, everybody. Brother Leslie Wiles here, and we're going to do us a little Bible study. And we've got a special topic we're going to talk about here. Um, but before we do that, we want to welcome everybody. And let's go to the Lord in prayer first right quick, please, shall we? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time of uh, fellowship, this time I can get the message out. Father, I pray that the message go out and not come back void. Father, pray that, that you anoint the message. Give me unction to preach it and teach it. And Father, I pray a blessing to all that hear it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, um, hey Austin, what's going on, buddy? Yeah, you know, here's some the Lord put on my heart. You know, I was going through some of the channels. You know, you flip through YouTube, and, and then of course, you know, Facebook. Everybody's shooting videos, and it's kind of cool. You know, you, you get to see some of your favorite um, musicians and singer songwriters in their homes. You know, picking a guitar, eating a pizza, or something. You know, just living like normal folks. It's kind of good to see people. You know. <laughs> you know, at home and, you know, rekindling friendships and whatnot. But here's what I want to talk about. You know, I was looking at all this stuff, and they talk about tough guys. Now, let me tell you something. I've known my share of tough guys. They thought they was tough. Some of them was tough. You see them on TV. You see kung fu fighters. You see wrestlers. You see boxers, and they go at it and all this bit. And, you know, thinking about tough people, you know, Throughout history, you know, they even if you look at the Bible, there's a lot of tough folks talking about Samson. Man, he was big and strong, you know, and he was a tough guy. And, you know, David, you know, Goliath was a tough guy until he met David. <laughs> but the fact is it talks about tough. And, and you know, um, we see that, you know, Hollywood has its own opinion of what it believes is a, what is a tough. Now, what is tough? What, I mean, what, what are we talking about here? We know there used to be um, a commercial on Timex watches. It takes a licking and keeps on ticking. Yes, what do we, what do we, what do we think about when we go tough? Like when we, when we get something that you want, you know, for example, you want a tough suspension on your pickup truck. If you got to haul a lot of stuff and you got rough roads, you want to make sure you got something tough. Why? Because it will handle abuse. Okay. What is toughness? Toughness is the ability to handle abuse, to be knocked down, to get up again, to be overturned, and to right yourself again. That is toughness. Toughness is the resilience you have. Can you get up when you knock down? That's toughness. A lot of times we think, oh, we tough and we're this, till we come up into a situation. How tough are you? You know, um, here's the thing, guys. The Bible talks about different people who were tough. He talks about Samson. But let me tell you something, friends. The toughest person who ever walked on the face of the earth was the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to turn your Bibles to the book of Isaiah. Now, I preached on Isaiah Chapter 53, that is the chapter that talks about who the Messiah is. Go to Isaiah chapter 52, verse 14, and it is describing the Lord Jesus Christ's physical condition at the time. And it says, and this is, this is from the prophet, 700 years before Christ. Let's go to verse 13. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently and shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. As many, here we go, were astonished at thee. His visage was so marred more than any man and his form 
more than the sons of men. What does that mean? Otherwise, the Lord Jesus Christ was abused and beat on more than anyone. And he made it to the cross. What does it talk about? As many were astonished, thee, his visage was samarred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. So shall he sprinkle many nations. Sprinkle with his precious blood. Now, how is Jesus the toughest guy? Well, I'm going to tell you what Jesus endured, and you can tell me if you can endure it. You know, when it talks about the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, they arrested him in the garden. You know, they took him to Pilate. And, you know, he went back and forth from Pilate to Herod. And he went through what is known as a scourging. Now, what is a scourging? First of all, scourging is done with a whip known as a flagrum. It is a long handled with long, it's like a cat of nine tails is what it is. And within each of those tails, there is a piece of metal, a jagged piece of metal tied into it, a very razor sharp piece of metal. Y'all don't leave now. You need to hear this because this is what he did for you. You think you're a tough guy? Let's see if you could go through what the Lord Jesus Christ went through. Although none of us qualify to die for anybody's sins. How tough are you? Anyway, this Roman flagrum, cat of nine tails with bits of bone and metal. And as they put it to the back of the Lord, his skin ripped open, his veins and his blood vessels, blood was pouring out all over. They beat him more than any man. And how he didn't bleed to death right there is amazing. Round a crown of thorns around his head. Could you... Could you have taken that and lived? Could you have taken that kind of abuse? No, we ain't even at the cross yet. We're just starting. It's going to be gruesome, preacher. It sure will. How tough are you, friend? How tough are you? How tough are you to get beaten and beaten than having to carry his 100-pound beam across your back all the way through the old city of Jerusalem? beaten the whole time and falling down, crushing your rib cage, breaking your heart essentially as you fall forward and that beam is tied to your back. That's what he did. <laughs> no man could have survived what the Lord Jesus Christ survived. You think you're tough? You ain't tough. I think I'm tough. I ain't tough. No. Yeah, and they beat him and they beat him as he went up that hill. The perfect human, the one who loved you. God Almighty in the flesh. The Word who became flesh. Yes, he was, he was marred beyond the visage of any man. Yeah, he was beaten beyond, beyond what anybody could ever have been and lived. And he made it to Calvary. And they stuck his arms out there. Let me tell you something. These long railroad spikes. Friend, you want to laugh at me and put up a ha-ha? Well, let me tell you something, pal. You need to know what he did for you. These long spikes went right through his wrists, not through his hands. God Almighty crushed through his wrists, both sides. Could you handle that, friend? Are you tough? Big guy, big girl, are you tough? And then his ankles together. They ran this spike through his ankles. Then they hung him up. Where his sheer weight, his body hanging on the cross, he couldn't breathe. And he hung there for practically six hours. Yeah. How tough are you? God Almighty did this for you, friends. For God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son 
Who is he? The Lord Jesus Christ. How is he the son? Because he became a man. The word became flesh. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. And everything was created by the word. So the creator came down. Allowed his own creation to utterly brutalize him. Yes, right. Humanity. I'm talking to you, friend. You and I have a choice to make. For God took upon the sins of the world. Let me tell you, we're not done yet. He just got nailed. And he just got put up on the cross. Oh, we're not finished yet. He's still got to go through more of punishment for our sake. And the Bible says that he became sin for us on the cross. That for a time, God the Father could not look upon the Lord. He had to look away. And at the time he did, Jesus said, Lord, why have you forsaken me? Because for a split second, God could not look at him. Why? Because the sins of the world were coming down on him. Here we have the perfect lamb of God hanging on a cross, bruised and beaten. How about it, tough guy? Could you take it? And then the perfect lamb of God, every sin you've ever committed and I've ever committed is being put on him on the cross. Every sin every human being ever committed is put upon that cross and he is taking it. Hello, hello. He's taking it on that cross. And you know what? Let me tell you something. Nobody put him to the cross. He went there willingly. Willingly. He gives his life willingly. He takes it and he gives it. No man takes his life. He gave it up freely. He went to that cross for you and I. That by believing on him and the work he performed, we would have our salvation. How tough are you, friend? I, could, I wouldn't have survived the first round of scourging. Hello? Hello? The toughest man that ever lived was the Lord Jesus Christ. He took a beating beyond anything, and he did it for you. And he was beaten by people who were hate mongers, who were liberals, who thought everything was right but him. Yeah, these were the people, the lovers of sin, all these people. Yeah, he died for them too. He loved the people, the people that abused him the most are the ones that he loved the most. He said, Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And people now still don't know what they do because they haven't heard the gospel. How tough are you, friend? Can you do it? Could you take it? No. How tough are you, friend? Could you handle hellfire? Oh, I could handle it for about a nanosecond. That's all. It's eternity, friend, and it's real. It's waiting on everybody who rejects the Lord Jesus Christ's finished work, which is the gospel telling you, friend, you think you tough, tribulation is coming. You think you tough? <laughs> Go to Revelation chapter 9. Get your Bibles out. Tough guys, tough gals, I'm talking to you that reject the Lord, that are fighting it. All you smart Alex that want to, that want to make rude calls, get, get Revelation chapter 9. For all you that are going to be left behind, if I got something for you, and you ain't going to like this, this is the Lord's word, not mine. Okay? You talking about monsters? I know these folks be calling. They need to knock it off. I'm on the phone. You talk about monsters from the pit? Here we go. Revelation chapter 9. All you guys, you think you're tough? <laughs> Let's see if you can fight this. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from the heaven unto earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as a smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. 
and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. Now, oh, well, we get locust plagues. We see them all the time. People post them all the time. We see them on YouTube and Facebook. What's new? Uh, wait, hang on. There's more. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but they should be tormented five months. And their torment was the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. Sound like a bunch of zombies, don't you? Don't it? Hear it again. And in those days, which is coming soon, friends, this is during the tribulation period. These are the folks that rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. The church is already in heaven with the Lord in the rapture. Listen carefully. And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. Listen to how the locusts, these ain't your typical locust friends. This is supernatural. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses, prepared unto battle, and on their heads were as it were crowns of gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. And they had hair as the hair of women. Kind of like Fabio, huh? Hang on. And their teeth were as the teeth of lions. And they had breastplates. And it were breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like scorpions, like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, and in Greek it's Apollyon. Or if you're Hindu, it's Shiva, the destroyer. Hello, the devil. We're talking about tribulation coming very soon. We're talking after, this is after, after the rapture of the church. We're talking things. How tough are you? Could you handle it? Could you survive it? You think you're tough? I tell you something, you dying without Jesus. <laughs> you ain't, you, you ain't going to last one nanosecond in hell burning. You're not that tough. You know, God made it a way where we can escape all, all of the judgment by trusting the Lord Jesus Christ as only one person. There's only one name under heaven. Peter even says, there's only one name under heaven by which a man can be saved. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you go to him and ask him to forgive you, he will be faithful and just. He'll wash away your sins, give you a new life. You ask him, you ask him to save you, ask him to forgive you of your sins. And you have to, here's the thing, you're trusting in him for your salvation. You're believing what this book, the Holy Bible says is true. You are trusting your salvation in what's written in this book. That's right. Let me tell you something. Nobody else can pay for your debt. Do you know what self-righteousness is? Self-righteousness is thinking that you can get to heaven any other way than by the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ alone. Let me say that again. Let me say that again. What is self-righteousness? It is thinking that you can get to heaven by any other way than the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. What do you give me an example, preacher? Okay, well, you know, I'm, I'm a good person. I'm, I've done good. I go to church, man. I tithe. I give more than twenty percent. I help the widows and orphans. I'm a good guy. I say my prayers. I'm a member of the church. I'm confirmed. I'm good. I'm good. My parents were Christians. I grew up in a Christian home. I'm good. <laughs> You're not. That don't get it. Jesus said you must be born again. You know, there's so much, so much. You need to get saved. 
Your salvation, your trip to heaven, is bought and paid for. That is the very first thing you get when you get saved. Well, salvation isn't the last thing you get when you pass away. That's the first thing you get. If you're washed in the blood and you're born again, Jesus Christ hung on the cross. The last words that came out of his mouth was, it is finished. Complete and total redemption. You do not lose your salvation. The Lord Jesus Christ is not some impotent demigod or demiurge. He is God in the flesh. And what he says goes. I'm not tough enough. He's the toughest man that ever lived. He took the greatest beating. He took it all. He paid it all. And you know what? When I go to be with the Lord, I'm going to have a whole new set of teeth. I'm going to have all my body be working. I'll have a head of hair again. My goodness. <laughs> but you know what? For eternity, the Lord Jesus Christ will bear the scars of his crucifixion. And for all of us to see for eternity, we will see what our God did for us. And I'm going to tell you, friend, right now, if you reject the Lord Jesus Christ and you die in your sins, you deserve it. You deserve hellfire for thinking that you're, you could get there on your own. The Bible says, none are righteous, no, not one. The Bible goes on to say that man's righteousness is like filthy rags in the eyes of the Lord. Let me tell you something, friends. When I stand before the Lord Jesus Christ, when I stand before God after death, it ain't because I'm good or bad that I'm going to heaven because I am washed in his blood. I'm covered in his righteousness. His blood is righteousness. His word is your strength and your power. The only reason I'm going to heaven is because of I believe on him and his precious blood shed and his finished work. And because I can stand in front of God, knowing that all my sins are washed clean, forgiven, and forgotten, I can walk in victory now and always. And you can too. I don't, care. don't let anybody tell you you can't. Oh, thus saith the Lord. If the Lord says it, believe it. Yeah, there's a lot of people who are tough. They can take a lick. You know, I'm not tough. <laughs> Some areas maybe I'm tough. Other areas I just melt like butter. But you know what? We need to get smart. We need to get saved. We need to understand it. Think about it. He's the toughest man that ever lived. He's the greatest man that ever lived. Think about it. He's got more songs written about him than anybody ever existed. Hundreds, you can open up a Baptist hymnal, 500 songs, all about the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. How about that? <laughs> yeah. You, you, you want to worship celebrity? There you go. He's God. He paid it all. He did it all for you and me. Nobody else can qualify. Nobody can come close. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, friend, and thou shalt be saved. Don't be a tough guy. Be a smart guy. Smart girl. Toughness here. Smartness. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's be smart. Let's stay out of hell. Stay out of hell fire. Believe on the Lord, friend. I'm serious. Let me tell you something. The rapture can happen anytime. If you're a lost person and you've got little children under the age of accountability, when the rapture happens, the church is gone. And those children are gone too. And if you're a lost person, you're left behind. I'm telling you, friend, don't be left behind. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. This is Brother Leslie Wiles, King James Bible Baptist Church, Garden City, Kansas. Believe on him. He paid it all. I love you in the Lord. Until, until next time, may the Lord richly bless you all, beloved. Peace.